Hi, this is Gorab Gil, Hermanos Brilakis, presenting case 170 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of coronary perforation that we had difficulties sealing the perforation. The patient was a woman that presented with unstable angina, was found to have multivessel coronary disease, but was turned down for surgery because of high BMI and low mobility. She did have significant lesions in the proximal LAD on the left system, and also she did have a severe calcified lesion in the distal right coronary artery. We decided to start with PCI of the right coronary artery. However, we did have a lot of difficulty with engaging the vessel using radial access, despite using a guide extension. We also see that the lesion is after a large bend, and also it has severe calcification. So how to deliver equipment in that lesion? We have uh, several steps. One is to use smaller balloons, but here it looks like the main issue is guy catheter support. So we decided to switch to femoral axis and use again a guide extension. This is an AL1 from femoral axis and a guide extension that's advanced essentially all the way down to the distal right coronary artery. And now we were able to deliver a balloon across the lesion. However, now we have the different problem, which is that the balloon is not expanding. So we first had a balloon uncrossable lesion with more support with crossed, but now we have a balloon undilatable lesion. So how to deal with this? Uh, the simplest step is to try with uh, high-pressure balloon inflations and actually using an NC balloon. We were able to successfully expand the lesion, but unfortunately, at this point, the balloon ruptured. And then we saw this staining of the wall of the right coronary artery. We thought this might just be a dissection, although again, it seems to go deep into the wall. And we did place a drug eluting stent. This seemed to be, again, more of an LS2 perforation, potentially. But we continue to have uh, this uh, staining of the wall of the vessel, have the staining further out on the wall. We did do an echocardiogram that did not really show a pericardial effusion, but we were still concerned about the perforation. And this is a large vessel perforation. We did put a balloon for a prolonged period of time that didn't work. We gave some fluids, but the patient was hemodynamically stable. We did not do, need to do pericardiosynthesis and would not need any surgical support. So these are the covered stents for sealing this perforation with PK papyrus being the most commonly used. And after we did to have this uh, staining slash extravasation, we decided to place the papyrus. The covered stents can be challenging to deliver, but fortunately, having the guide extension essentially all the way to the distal RCA, we were able to successfully deliver a 3.5 by 26 millimeter PK papyrus stand. And then we position it according to where we thought was the exit uh, from the vessel. So right around this um, thicker part of the vessel is where we thought the extravasation was happening. We looked at it from a different uh, projection. And yes, it looks like we're across that area of the extravasation. So we deployed the PK papyrus 3.5 by 26. But uh, to our disappointment, although it's better, we still have some uh, contrast seeping through the vessel into the wall of the vessel. So what to do next? We looked at another projection, and once again, we still have some contrast going outside the vessel wall. Sometimes the papyrus may not be exposed, so what we did is we expanded it more using a post-dilatation. But once again, we continue to have this... Uh, Contrast extravasation. What to do next? Uh, we decided to place another papyrus because we thought that the mechanism might be that the exit point is different from what we thought was the exit point before. And sure enough, after we placed another papyrus more proximal, now we have complete sealing without any more staining on the wall of the vessel. We did intravascular ultrasound and it showed that the stents were well expanded. We do have a good minimal lumen area. And because we did place a drug eluting stent outside the cover stent, that uh, might help potentially reduce the risk of restenosis with the cover stent. And this was the final angiogram on the right coronary artery. 
we were initially planning to also do the left system during the same procedure, but given the challenges, complications, this was staged for a later date. We did an echocardiogram in the procedure room, and this is the echo after the procedure was done. There is a very small pericardial effusion, maybe some more staining along the wall of the right ventricle, potentially from contrast going there. Again, very small effusion. The patient did well and did not require any additional treatment for the right coronary artery. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that guide support is critical for equipment delivery, especially through tortuosity and through heavily calcified lesions. Next, we did have a balloon dilatable lesion, and even though the balloon, NC balloon, expanded, it did cause, uh, it was ruptured, causing a perforation slash dissection. So every time a balloon ruptures, it is important to immediately look for any complication. Dissection, perforation, sometimes air embolism can happen as well. And you want to detect this immediately. So if there is a perforation, one can inflate another balloon, prevent the bleeding into the pericardium, and reduce the risk of tamponade. The most interesting part of this case was how to manage the perforation slash dissection. We did do prolonged balloon inflation, but that didn't work. We did a regular DS that did not work. And we also placed a papyrus covered stand. But unfortunately, we still had a contrast coming through. And we had to place a second PK papyrus to completely seal that area of perforation slash dissection. The message here is that in cases of dissection or perforation, sometimes the exit point from the vessel can be challenging to discern even by doing orthogonal views. We did orthogonal projections in this particular patient, but still, despite placing the PK papyrus where we thought was the exit point, we had to place a second PK papyrus stand to achieve complete hemostasis. Thank you.